Good morning, y'all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of this morning. Thank you for the breath of life. Jesus, we pray that you, we ask that you would uh, forgive us for any ways that we have yeah, offended you or others, any ways that we have um, turned our own way, turned our back on you or on others. Forgive us, O oh Lord. We pray that by the blood of your son Jesus, uh, we would be cleansed through his sacrifice, through his righteous life, Lord. And help us not to take that for granted, but Lord, help us to yeah, take your hand again today. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would fill us to overflowing so that we would yeah, not only know your way, but be able to walk in it. Empower us, Lord, with your spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. Lead us into your truth. Lord God, give us understanding into your word today. Help us to really make it a part of our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're in uh, John chapter 18. So we'll be, be reading from John chapter 18, starting from verse 25, and we'll end in verse 27. I'll be reading from the NIV, but you could read from any other version. I just find it's helpful to uh, this this version because one it's an international so international team of people that brought together this translation but also it's a good balance between uh, like literal that might be harder to understand uh, and uh, it's more understandable for us so it's a good balance between the two uh, but yeah um, start from verse 25 but we want to ask ourselves uh, what does this passage tell us about God what does this passage tell us about God? That's the first question we might ask ourselves. All right. Starting from verse 25. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was standing there, warming himself. So they asked him, You aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, a rooster began to crow. So what does this passage tell us about God? What does this passage tell us about God? I'll give us a minute to really reflect on that. this passage tell us about God? If anything comes to mind, please feel free to write in the comments. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah, what does this passage tell us about God? I see right here, man, Jesus had just been totally falsely accused, totally just mistreated in this fake trial um, that they couldn't even produce any witnesses for. And he, Jesus is alone. His friends 
just were not there. They were physically there. They didn't back him up. And uh, here's Simon Peter, one of his closest friends right here. Just bold face, lying and denying Jesus uh, in his hour of, where it would have been good to have a safe person. But Jesus is completely alone in that sense. And uh, man, not just once, not just twice, three times. Imagine if, if a friend of yours just completely denies even knowing you to even be associated with you. Gosh, what a betrayal, you know? But what does this tell me about God? That Jesus is so patient and so merciful to us. We know later that Jesus forgives Peter for this. I don't know, would I would I be able to do that? That's God. Working with us, patient with us, merciful to us, gracious to us. Oh man. Yeah, what does that tell me about God? He doesn't give up on us. Even if we give up on him, he does not give up on us. It's beyond beyond what I could do. That's what makes him God. Yeah, and it's not like this doesn't hurt God. But his love for us is stronger. His love for us is what's going to take him to the cross. And it's amazing. What else does this tell me about God? Here we see, yeah, Peter denies Jesus three times, just like Jesus said he would. Jesus knew Peter was going to do this. It's crazy to think that does God know does God know everything that we're going to do? And uh well Jesus did. At least he knew Peter was gonna do this. Three times and then that bef it would even the time uh, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Jesus knew at that level of detail. And God, who sees all time, he sees our past, our present, our future, even. He knows not just our victories, but our failures. And still, Jesus is committed to us. I hope this is good news to you. Who loves like that? Who loves like that? I don't know, you're commit, you have a friend and you're going to see all the ways that they are going to massively fail and turn their backs on you. Oh man, would you still stay in it? Would you still stay in that friendship? Jesus did. That's what makes him God. His long-suffering patience, his grace to us, especially knowing uh, where we will fail. It's good. It's good, God. So, uh, what does this uh, passage tell us about people? What does this passage tell us about people? Give us a minute to reflect on that. What does this passage tell us about people? And if anything comes to mind, please feel free to write that in the comments. It's a, it's a great way to 
engage in what is God speaking to you? What does this passage tell us about people? Well, if we look at Peter, um, gosh, we're broken. This is talking about believers, you know? Not talking about the world, talking about believers. These are people, Peter loved Jesus. Peter gave, gave up his work to follow Jesus everywhere he went. He witnessed everything Jesus did. He himself did some, did some good work. This is a follower of Jesus. But we're broken. Here he is, his, his Jesus is on trial. And he's just right there, warming himself. You know, what, what's, he, what's, what's going through his mind? I wonder. Maybe he's, maybe he's starting to like reconsider. Should I have followed this Jesus? This Jesus that gets arrested? Should I follow this Jesus? Man, what, what's this going to do for me? What's this going to do for my family? I, I wonder what he's thinking. He already denied Jesus once, and now the second time. Someone asked him, hey, aren't you his disciples? One of his disciples? You know, and in, a, in a, another account, they kind of recognize the way that he talks. They're like, wait, you're from Galilee, right? Aren't you like, that's the area where... Jesus, a lot of Jesus' followers are from. Um, and you're here. He said, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. And then you have somebody just, who's basically like, most likely there, and saw Peter in the garden. Just like, didn't I see you with him in the garden? I was, which means I was likely there. Didn't I see you with him in there? You have a witness right here. And even still, Peter denies it. He's like, no. And another account reveals he's, st he's starting to call down curses, you know. So much so, it's like, hey, I, will, I'm, I was so not there that, you know, I'll, I'll curse myself, right? I'm calling down curses on him. He's, he's being extra. Wow, do we see this? We could like really judge Peter, but I don't know. What does this tell us about people? We're seeing this right now, aren't we? Uh, facts don't really matter right now, unfortunately. Uh, we become in a place where oh, we're so divided and so polarized as a country. Um, I don't know if you've ever had, try to have a conversation with people on the left, people on the right, like really deep in it. They won't hear nothing. They won't hear nothing on the other side. You know, and, and not that everything's good. What's troubling is even in the face of facts, 
that 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 might even go against uh, our positions just like these not followers of Jesus right when Jesus was calling them out and just asking questions and showing them that they're in the wrong about this kind of trial they get violent they, they dig in their heels even more and here you have a believer doing that oh man I, I don't want to be so arrogant to think that I might not be digging in my heels I might not be intellectually dishonest as philosophers say in the face of certain mountain mounting evidence but we just dig in even more uh, and I was reading about why do people do that why do people do that you think that we're like rational but you know we're actually not that rational <laughs> um, uh, my wife G uh, uh, pulls out an analogy from uh, some a cognitive from cognitive science about how we think we think we're really rational but actually the analogy of how we are is a giant elephant and with a little rider on top and the little rider on top is our rationality right but with our logic with the big elephant is everything else that's our emotions that's our gut reactions uh our biases who they're very very strong um yeah uh this applies in so many ways right now i mean if we're talking about current events right now if you say oh what are you talking about um there is something called implicit race bias uh that means not even external like externally hey i'm not a racist right externally hey man i, I know everybody gotta love everybody you know even secular people know that you know uh, I, I gotta be fair that's important uh, but what happens is they do experiments where uh, they just show quick pictures uh, of, of, of people right um, and you know we so in our rationality we're like hey we should judge people I'm not racist right and then they show quick pictures of people and and judge our immediate responses and wouldn't you know uh, and, and the, these are not pictures of people doing violent things with just people just doing regular sort of things um, they just show the pictures real quick and they measure kind of our brain reactions and wouldn't you know at least when it's done in America uh, when there's pictures of black people or people from the other group fear comes up right we're, we're more likely to immediately a gut reaction that's the elephant uh, respond in a negative way even though rationally we know uh, we shouldn't can't help but emotionally how we respond that's based on so much years of experience and uh, how we perceive the world uh, our experience of the world So we, we could kind of dig in our heels, uh, even in the face of that evidence, um, still kind of be in denial. So that's why we got to change the systems, but man, we got to change our hearts. How do we change our immediate reactions, our instincts, if you will? We really need a heart change. Like Peter right here, he's threatened because... Uh, for him to associate himself with Jesus, not an easy thing here, right? It's not right what he did, but he he knows if he associates himself in this sham of a trial, they're gonna come after him. Maybe his family, what's gonna happen to his family? So that just takes right over right there. Um, mm. And there's so many things, if you look at psychology, uh, it's confirmation bias once we once we kind of choose something uh, even in the face of different evidence we're, we're just gonna hold on to that um, and I was reading something else about why is it so difficult for people to uh, change their mind 
you know, the biggest thing right now, the biggest example right now is just like politically, uh, like political party or something like that, or, or certain tenets of, of a political party. Um, why is it so hard for us to change? Uh, even in the face of some really kind of damning evidence, why do we dig in our hill? And this article is talking about it will cost us too much to change. One, we have to admit that we are wrong. But two, that means we got to change. And if that change is too hard, too, too, it'll cost us too much. Even in the face of facts and evidence, we won't change. So for Peter right here to say that he knows Jesus, it was a cost that Peter was too much for him to pay. He wasn't willing to pay this cost at this time in his life. Thankfully, what does this tell us about people? Jesus didn't give up on Peter. Praise God he didn't give up on Peter. And we're going to hit that later. Um, but this isn't the end of Peter's life. Uh, actually, the end of Peter's life, he does lay down his life for Jesus. And in a pretty amazing sort of way. I, I think pretty amazing. Um, you should look into it to be continued. Third question. Um, how do we... Yeah. How does God want us to respond to this word? Give us a minute to reflect on that. God, what is it that you're speaking to us? How do you want us to obey this word? Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. I mean, this is a new, I'm challenged to follow Jesus, even if it'll cost me, be willing to pay that cost to follow him and knowing that he's patient with me, I may fail, but I don't want to keep on failing. <laughs> I don't want to be okay with that. I want to learn even now, before, or even training wheels, uh, to prepare to pay a cost, whatever cost, to follow him. Knowing that he knows me, knowing that he won't give up on me, I won't give up on him. Yeah. And of course, to always be intellectually honest, but to follow him, because this is a relationship we're talking about. So to be true, to be true to him, even when it seems like, Jesus, why are you doing these sort of things? Why are you allowing these sort of things to happen? I would trust him, I'll hold on to him. Fourth question, who do we share this word with? Who can we encourage with this? Maybe 
people who are in denial at least have that conversation. Because eventually Peter recognizes what he did. Maybe someone who needs encouragement. Maybe they've denied Jesus. Maybe someone who needs encouragement. God, God hasn't given up on them. No matter what's going on in this day, in this time, we need love. We need uh, we need to hear each other's voices and connect. God made us for relationship. Most of all, relationship with Him. So that we really press into that. No matter the cost. Let me pray for us. Jesus, thank you for your word. Even though it hurts sometimes. Thank you, Lord God, that you chose Peter. Here we have uh, one of his most monumental failures just recorded for all of us to see. And this isn't to shame him, Lord God. But Lord, it shows the length, the strength, the depth of your love. That you would work with someone like this. That you would redeem someone like this. Which means you could, you could work with us. You could redeem us. No matter how many times we fail. Just help us not to give up. Help us not to give up even after we mess up. Trust you, Lord. And when we're pressed, and what it's going to cost us, help us not to buckle. Help us to hold on. Help us to be willing to pay the cost to change uh, for the sake of truth. Even if... Uh, Everyone else says that's not the truth, Lord. Help us hold on to you. Because you are the truth. Oh God, help us not to forget all that you have done and shown us, Lord. And uh, yeah, even when it's going to be costly to follow you, even when we don't understand why you do what you do, we still hold on to you. Help us, oh God. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all.